Welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Backerl D'Angelo, your host. Today is October 31st, 2016, and I decided I was going to do a state of the game. And there's a big reason for this. It has to do with something I said on another show that I do with Soapy Girl and Eden Star, and that's called Lightspeed Lunatics, which airs on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. on the base radio. Last week, we were talking about a prior interview I had with Cameron, and later on, I talked about a prior interview I had with Sandy. During the conversation about Sandy's interview, I let go that she had talked to me about potential release of Squadron 42 on the console, and how the console would be the perfect place for Squadron 42 to coexist with the Windows version of that same title. Never was it mentioned that that was in the works, never was it mentioned that that was set in stone, and never was it mentioned that they had even considered it. It was just something that Sandy and I were talking about hypothetically. Now, it does make sense for Squadron 42 to move to the console being the type of game that it is. The multiplayer aspect of the universe, the persistent universe, makes it a little bit more difficult for something like a console to be a platform for that type of game. But the single player or multiplayer drop-in missions that are offered by the Squadron 42 game is perfect. And to sum it up, it would it would be a huge seller on that platform just because it's going to be an amazing game. Never was it mentioned it was definite and never was it mentioned that it was in the works. It was just something that she and I talked about hypothetically. Now you could all hear that if somebody would just be able to help me with one thing. That interview is destroyed by my audio. I captured her audio on one track and my audio on another track. Her audio is perfectly clean, where mine has a high-pitched whine on it. Now I'm going to post my audio in a Dropbox and share it with anybody that wants to give me a hand and see if they can clean it up. If it's cleaned up, I'll release the interview. I only want to release the interview with my audio and hers because it's important to hear my questions and my follow-up questions and not just what she says. Because when you listen to the things that she says, they can be taken out of context if you don't hear my questions and follow-ups. So I'm going to release that tonight, or I should say early in the morning on October 31st. And the quicker somebody can help me and get that back to me, the quicker we can get this video of our interview up and done. Now I'm hoping somebody can do this quickly for me because what's going on right now is that Derek Smart and other people are using my statement as a way to say this is what they said. And it's not what she said. And those people are just trying to incite bad feelings amongst the game. Now, I do consider myself a pseudo-journalist, which is someone that is in the community and likes the game, but also knows that I have to have somewhat of a non-biased approach when I do my videos. And I've tried that in the past, and people get a little bit upset. But in this case, I, I think that... I think that what she said is 100% harmless and it's just a thought process that was brought about by me asking about her future plans to market the game. Second step, transparency at CIG. Last year, when they first attempted to bring out Star Marine, there was a lot of talk about the game weekly. Not only that, we also got an update weekly until they postponed Star Marine until this year. That's not happening this year. We do get ultra transparent videos like the Road to Citizen Con, where we get to see Chris Roberts making the hard call of not putting in the demo of Squadron 42 because it's just not ready yet. But we're not getting that transparency on a day-to-day basis right now. And 
I don't know if that's right or wrong. The game is entering a different level of development at this point. But to be honest with you, I feel kind of let down. Not by CIG, but maybe by CIG, I'm not sure. But that we're not getting those updates about what's keeping the game back. Maybe they're hidden within those wonderfully detailed monthly reports. Maybe it's hidden in the numbers of different videos that they do each week from 10 for the chairman to 10 for the developers to RTV, ATV, whatever it might be, right? But I just don't seem to be hearing the same things I heard last year when they were trying to keep us informed as to what was going on. Now there's a lot going on at CIG. They don't just have this one patch that they're trying to do. They're trying to do 3.0, put out Squadron 42. So there's a lot going on there. And that's when I start to become worried. Is there too much on their plate? Is there not? I know what the real answer is, but how does a company like CIG, which has been ultra transparent at times and not so transparent at other times, quell those fears that the passionate backers have? And I think it is with going back to something like they did with the original intended release of Star Marine last year. Maybe not giving us an update every day. Maybe not giving us an update every week. But at least every other week. So we know where you're at. We just keep on getting it's ready when it's ready. And I understand that. But we're not typical everyday purchasers of the game. We've invested not just gobs of money into this, but gobs of our heart and our soul and our belief and our own integrity into the game. And as that, I feel kind of like a partner and not so much like a, a, a customer of CIG. And I hope that all of you that have invested as little as $45 and as much as I met people that were over 50 k I hope you feel that way. So I don't know what's right, what's wrong, where we go from here. But, you know, I'm kind of craving that transparency while there's nothing coming out. So at least we know where they're at. What are they doing? So we feel like part of that project again. We felt like part of that project when we see those videos that I mentioned, the road to CitizenCon. But with the new RTVs and ATVs, I just don't feel like that partner. Tell me what your thoughts are and put them down below. I want to thank Tristan and Stefan for becoming the latest patrons over at my patreon.com forward slash Batgirl Patreon page. Over at patreon.com forward slash Batgirl, you could contribute as little as $1 a month to help the cause. Help me get new equipment, continue this wonderful YouTube channel I have. I hope you think it's wonderful. And potentially get me to some of the cons so I can report on what's going on. And now for Bar Citizens. There will be a Bar Citizen in Atlanta at Battle and Brew in Sandy Springs, and that will be happening at 5 p.m. on the 18th of November. Now, that is right around the live stream. I invite all of you to come. I have friends of mine, Sophie Girl, and uh, I believe we might even have Seve Davis Jr. joining us, but he's one of my enabler friends. But if you want to come see me, if you want to be part of the fun that we'll be having there, be sure to show up sometime between 5 and 7.30 p.m. I will be arriving at 7.30 and have some fun with us. Well, folks, that's all I have for you this week. This was kind of an expedited show. I wanted to make sure I put something out to combat what Derek Smart was saying about my Lightspeed Lunatics appearance. And hopefully we can put this to rest as soon as someone fixes my audio. And with that said... You all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.